Hi, I'm Carla Brown from Trash Imagination, and I love to weave plastic bags and make them into mats and other items such as purses. And I'm going to teach you a tutorial today on how I do that on a floor loom like this one. This is mine and the process that goes into getting the loom ready before I start weaving. Now I first learned how to weave from an instructor at the Workhouse Arts Center and it was my instructor's name was Marilyn Harrington and she taught me a lot about how to weave with typical fibers like cotton. Um, I had to adapt that in order to be able to weave with plastic bags. So many of the things she taught me are still a part of what I do today but then I've had to improvise in the years since because because plastic bags do not behave exactly like cotton. Now for the first step, I set up my room. I have here on one side of my living room, my floor loom, and then across the living room, I set up my story loom. Now you don't actually need a story loom. You just need something that will keep your threads straight as you're putting them through your loom. A great substitute for a story loom is a garment rack like this, which I purchased at Target for about $40. So as I said, you don't need a story loom in order to weave plastic bags, but I should at least explain what this is so that it makes sense in the video. So I took a weaving course from Susan Barrett Merrill. It's called her Weaving a Life course, and it's a great course if you have an opportunity to take it. And in that course, we learned all sorts of different weaving techniques, but one of the methods that we use is called tapestry weaving, which is a different type of weaving than the type I'm doing in this tutorial, which involves a floor loom. And it involves putting a warp up and down on this space. So you can see this uh, loom, basically the way you would weave is you would weave back and forth across this space. Um, so I use it when I'm putting the warp on my floor loom because what I'll do is I'll run the warp all the way across the room and then hook it up on the top here just to keep everything in line. And so again, you really don't need a story loom, but I just want to explain why I have this rather complicated looking contraption in the video so that when you do your weaving and your warping that it, you're not wondering if you have to have it in order to do the project. Once your room is set up, it's time to put the warp on the loom and you need to know what type of thread or string or yarn to use for the warp. And when it comes to plastic bag recycling, it's quite open-ended what you might use. The number one thing is you want to use something strong that won't break while you're halfway through your weaving project. And the way you test to see if it's strong enough is you just take the piece of the end and you try to break it with your hands. And if you, if you pull and it breaks, it's not strong enough. But this one passes the test. And this, for example, is a regular weaving cotton. I get most of my warp materials from Upcycle Recycle, which is a creative reuse center not far from where I live. So you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on warp materials. Uh, you can just use whatever strong threads you have. Now it's time to thread the loom. Now with most weaving projects that you learn in a more traditional way, you're going to measure out the thread or yarn and it involves a long process of pre-measuring and pre-cutting the threads that you use in the warp. But we're using such a simple method here. We're using a simple project. So we aren't going to do that process. We're not going to pre-measure the warp. And there's another piece that you won't do, which is there's a part of the warp that's called the cross, which we won't worry about having a cross in our warp. And that's just because we're doing it so simply here. So you, you cut out some steps. So first we need to learn some vocabulary. This, uh, these little metal pieces that hang down here, there's a whole bunch of them on my loom. These are called heddles. And then my loom has four shafts. So you can see the shafts are what moves up and down and allows you to weave. So the heddles are in the shafts. And then we have here a part called the beater. And within the beater, there is this piece, which is made of metal. And it's a whole bunch of tiny grooves where we're gonna thread through. So the process we're gonna go through right now involves threading through the beater, then heading, threading through the heddles, and then out through the back. So that's the first step that we're gonna do from our first, with our first thread.
So what I do is I just count out the first four heddles starting in the middle. You can see the heddles can't go past this middle, middle piece here. So I count out the first heddle on each shaft. So there's one on this one, one on this one, one on this one, one on this one. One, two, three, four. And I take my piece of thread right off, right off the spool. I'm not pre-cutting it. And I'll just put it on the floor and it can unroll as, as I thread it. I sort of guesstimate what's the middle of the beater. It's about here. So, and then I bend the thread into a loop to make it easier to thread. And I just put it through any hole and it doesn't have to be super perfect, but I'm just trying to aim it. So it sort of ends up near the heddle that I'm going to thread. I'm just going to take my heddle sign off here. The heddle has a, a little circular hole here in the middle, so I'm just going to put it through that hole. And then I'm going to pull the thread to the back. This is called the back beam. I'm just going to lay it there for a minute. So now I've walked behind the loom and I, I'm crouching down here just so I can talk with you, but you can see the thread that I laid on the back beam is here. And on my loom, it has these little pieces, these dowels that uh, stick up out of this part that turns. And I just tie um, my thread kind of loosely on here because I'm going to untie it pretty shortly, but I just don't want it to, when I start pulling on the other side, I don't want it to just let go and undo all the threading work that I already did. So now I've walked back to the front of the loom and my thread is here. It's coming all the way through the heddle, through the beater, and it's hanging out right here, going across this, the front of this piece. So then I reach down, I'm going to grab the whole spool and I'm going to walk to the other side of the room towards my story loom. So here I am walking across the room to my story loom and I've still got that spool of thread in my hand. And I'm going to take the thread up here, up over the top of my story loom, and I'm gonna kind of let it hang down. I'm gonna let the thread hang down in kind of a loop across the room, all the way from here over to my floor loom. And I'm gonna try to make all the threads have a similar kind of shape to the, to the bow of them so that I'm using about the same length of warp and I waste the least amount of thread. If I wanted to be really careful about this, I could pre-cut all the threads to a specific length, but I'm not going to do that because I just want to do this kind of rapidly. I find I can get a warp on my floor loom in about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes with this method, whereas other methods can take a lot longer. So as we're just going to let it hang down. I'm going to let it go almost down to the floor. Actually, if you let it touch the floor, then you know for sure it's the same length, right? So at this point, I always have a pair of scissors hanging off my story loom and I'm going to cut, cut the thread off right there. Put my spool back down on the floor and I've got my thread here and I'm just going to kind of loosely tie it to, in this case, I'm tying it to one of the screws at the top of the story loom. But if you don't have a story loom with screws, which you probably don't, you could just tie it loosely onto your garment rack or whatever item you're using across your room to kind of hold the thread. And you want to just keep that nice and separated and not getting tangled up until you get all the warp threads laid out. Now this might seem uh, like a kind of a strange method, but what I like about it is it, it goes very fast. It does require you having a big enough room. And if you can't do the warping all at one time, then it does mean that you have these threads hanging across your room for the length of time until you can finish the work. But you know, generally, as I said, it takes me about an hour to do an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm generally getting it all done in that period of time. So now what happens is I pick up my spool and I head back to the floor loom and I'm going to do this process like a hundred times, but let's head back to the floor loom and I'll show you what happens with thread number two. So here we are back at the floor loom and we're going to do thread number two in our warp. Um, I've got the spool down on the floor where it can just unravel as it needs to. Again, I make a loop to make it easier to thread. Now the beater has a, a lot of grooves, but I'm not going to go in every single groove. And the reason why is because there's, it's really great to go in every groove when you're using a very fine item for your weaving, but plastic bags are not a fine item. They're very blunt 
item. So we're going to uh, go every second loop and that is plenty. I have done every loop. When I started out, I used to, I used to go in every single hole, but now, uh, I just found it was too much warp going on more warp threads that were liable to break. Uh, just more, more concern than necessary. So it's hard to see here, but you can, I've gone into, I've left a gap in the beater and then I've gone into the next loop and then I pull the beater forward so I can see the heddle. And now I'm going to put it in the second heddle in the second shaft. So it's in shaft number two, and I'm going to go in that little hole in the heddle, just like I'm threading a needle. And I pull, pull it through. And then again, I'm just going to pull it through to the back bean. And in this, what I start doing at this point is I untie the thread I had on here already once. It's, it was only very loosely tied and I just put them together. I, I tend to tie them in groups of eight just to uh, have less knots to untie later. So again, get the heddle kind of in position there. Now I've got the second uh, thread in position. I'm going to head back here and I'm going to walk across to uh, my story loom. So I'm walking across the room with my thread, unraveling it as I go. And I want to make sure that I keep the spool on the correct side of the previous thread. So I wouldn't do this, for example, because then I'm creating a crisscross and that's when tangles start and that's when warps become big tangles that are no fun to work with. So I want to keep this thread. In this case, I'm going to keep it behind the thread I already did. Warp number two is on this side. Now, when I start warping in that direction, I'm going to go and have an aware, spatial awareness that way. But for now, what I'm doing is keeping it on this side of thread number one, and I'm going to unravel it down until it is touching the floor, just like number one was. And that nice curve is in the same angle. And I'm going to just let that go down to the floor. Luckily thread doesn't break and uh, cut it off again in a similar way that I cut off the previous one. And just like when I was tying the thread on the back beam and I untied the previous knot, I, it's pretty easy. Again, I've only loosely tied it. I'm going to put them together and get them all lined up Boop. and then tie a loose knot here. Now, I mean, it is very likely these are not exactly the same length, right? There, there's going to be some inches of difference. Although as I look down, they're very similar in, in their curve. So that's a good thing. And I'm, you know, having an awareness that I don't want them to get tangled up with each other. I could, if I was really worried about it, I could start tying them separated, but I find if I keep them in groups of eight, that's fine. They don't, that's not enough to get all tangled up together. If uh, I keep them generally or not twisted around each other. That's what we're aiming for here. So that's how you do thread number two. Now I would head back and start thread number three in the same process. Skip a, a hole, go in through the beater, do the third heddle. So I'm going to go ahead and do thread number three, thread number four, and then I'm going to show you how you would start going in the other direction um, across the loom with the rest of your warp. So now you can see I have uh, my first four threads put in the warp. Uh, on they're all on this side of the loom, but I need to start putting some threads on this side of the loom or else my weaving will be all over on the right hand side and that'll limit how wide my piece can be. The only trick with um, this side is that you're always going to want it to go one, two, three, four. So if you started here one, two, three, four, you it wouldn't be correct, right? It would be four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. So the trick is to find that fourth shaft, that fourth heddle, pull that across first, then the third one. And I, I tend to just kind of line them up like this to remind myself that I've got to do them in the right order. It's really important they get put in the right order or your weaving is not going to work. So you can see I've pulled out four, three, two, one, which is parallel to four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two. I got to make sure that it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. I cannot switch the order or when I weave this thing, it won't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. So let's push the beater back into position. We'll grab our next thread. So when I'm 
warping on the left side of my loom, I'm actually kind of going four, three, two, one. Again, I'm going to skip a hole and I'm going to go into the next hole. Yep, you can see I did it. Okay, and I'm going to go look for that back way. I'm re reaching past all, past one, two, three, and I'm reaching all the way to four. Make sure I get it in four. So you can see now four, one, two, three, four. Good, that's great. So now you can see I've put on the four threads on this side. So we've got a total of eight threads done. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got two, all four shafts, two threads each. And you can see as they go towards the back, they go together because they're tied together in the back, but that's fine. As long as they're keeping separated all the way from the heddles to the beater and then outward from there, we're good, okay? So at this point, to keep threading the warp, I would add four on this side or four on this side. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna end up doing both sides, so whichever side I feel like doing. I just tend to do them in groups of four, one after the other, so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And then also so I can keep that spatial awareness. You know, when I'm going across the room on this side, I stay on this side of the thread. And when I'm going across the room, I gotta go across on this side of the thread and, and keep everything separated so that we don't get tangles further down the line. So now I have put a lot of threads through, I've actually done it 48 times. And you can see this is how it's starting to look the uh, threads are going through the heddles, through the beater, and across the room to the story loom. And I'm going to take a moment here to pull the camera back and let you see what I just did 48 times. But before I do that, you might be wondering, well, how many warp threads should I put on the loom? And when you're doing more traditional weaving where you want a very specific outcome, there's math that you do where you multiply um, based on the size of the beater that you're using, based on the type of thread that you're using. But with plastic bag weaving, with creative reuse, we're just going to eyeball it. We're gonna do our best guess and it's going to lay out and. I'm not going to get an exact measurement in the end, but through trial and error, I kind of have the idea of how uh, it, the, the threads end up spreading out in the final product. Um, also, I have here my, my cone of thread. It's getting towards the end. So one of the risks that you take with using this method of putting your warp on your loom is that you could run out of warp thread in this exact color. If you were using leftovers, if it was hard to eyeball how much thread was on the cone when you got it. And so I've had situations where I get partway through putting the warp on and then I run out of thread. And that's okay as long as you are okay with the idea that your warp might have multi types, multiple types of thread. And then the other thing I do is I try to put the warp on from the center of the piece outward so that in theory, all of the warp that is the same color is in the center and then maybe the two ends would be different. So it looks at least symmetrical in the final piece. Um, so that's something you can do as well. So now I'm gonna pull back the camera and I'm not gonna have my microphone on during that part because it'll get tangled up in the threads, but you'll be able to see the flow of how I put one item, one thread through the warp from start to finish.
my cone is just about empty now so it's time to be finished with the warp it's about the distance the width that I wanted anyway so if I if you take this it's almost a foot wide and generally that's the width I tend to weave with plastic bag weavings that works with almost all the projects I make so now I've got the warp threaded all the way through the loom and it's time to start tying it along the back beam to solidify it so it doesn't slip off. And we're gonna go to the back of the loom now to do that process. So I'm behind the loom now looking out towards the story loom through there. We're looking at the back of the heddles. It looks a little bit like when we're in the front but it's a mirror image basically. And what you can see here along the back is that I have eight sections of eight threads each. I ended up putting 64 threads to make my warp. I think I said like I was gonna do something like 80 when I started, but this is when I ran out of thread and this is a sufficiently wide warp. So that's what we're gonna go with. So I tend to group the threads in groups of eight just to make it easier for me to quickly see at a glance how many threads I have warped and I just like to be consistent that way. So we'll start with the first one here. I'm gonna take it off the little peg it was on and I'm just gonna tie a knot. And for now I'm just gonna put it carefully over that so it doesn't fall off. I'm gonna repeat that eight times until I have all of them finished. Then there's this piece underneath the loom. Um, it doesn't turn right now because it doesn't turn unless I'm pulling up on a pedal in the front. But this is the part that I'm going to spool the warp on. It's gonna turn in this direction and I'm going to just slowly crank in the warp until it's all on this back portion. Um, so what I do is I reach down uh, and I try to find the closest thread that's hanging off of it. There are these white threads that are permanently attached to that part. And I take the knot and I'm gonna try to bring it up closer to the, there, so you can see it. So I, I basically double it over on itself. Okay, I'm gonna do that again to see if, that, if that's easier to see. I take the loop and I double it over on itself so that it makes a little lasso like that. And then I put the knot inside the lasso and then I tighten it. So they're basically attached to each other now without tying a knot. It's really easy later to undo this by just loosening the lasso. It's just a, a super quick way to attach the knots to the part that attaches to the loom. So I'm gonna do that one more time so you can see the whole process. I just peel off my section here, tie it in a knot. Then I reach down and find the closest white thread, put it back on itself. That, it's a little bit like magic. <laughs> and then a lasso through and tighten it around the knot. So I'm gonna keep on doing that with the other six and then I'll show you what happens next. So now I'm gonna show you how I start cranking the warp back onto this part that spins in the background. My right, my left hand here is over on a sort of handle that I push down and that's going to loosen up the chain that's keeping this from moving right now. And then I'm gonna use my right hand to spin this uh, shaft and, and to pull the loom, pull the warp back onto it. So here I'm gonna just hopefully <laughs> make sense. So, Pushing with my left hand, that loosened up this piece, and then I'm gonna start turning it. Now, as I turn it, those white threads that we tied the warp to are attached permanently to this item. I gotta make sure nothing gets tangled on it. And they are now spinning around and around. Um, you can see them lined up here. There are these little knobs that they're tied to. and along the back here now it's just suddenly all tightened up the warp has all tightened up i'm going to keep turning it and you can see the warp is starting to move back over the back beam and onto this item now i'm going to take a quick peek and make sure that they are staying in alignment and they might not all have the same tightness at this point but they will in a minute so keep them 
nice and aligned. I'm gonna keep cranking a little bit more, not too much more because we only have so much going on on the other side. So we're pulling it evenly. The warp is staying evenly spread out across there. You can see it's starting to get tight now and evenly tight, which is great. You can see that it's almost a straight line across from the heddles through the beater. Now what's happening on the other side of the loom is that all that uh, thread that was hanging in a big loop and going up to the story loom, that is now getting pulled up. All the slack of that is getting pulled up. So I'm slowly um, going to go a little bit further here and you can see that the end of the warp is starting to peek out here on the bottom of that item, of that turning crank thing. Okay, look, you can see the loom is, the warp is coming up and getting turned onto this item. Isn't this amazing how this works? So I, I still have some slack on the other side, so I'm gonna keep turning it. I'm keeping an eye on everything, make sure uh, sometimes weirdly like a bit of thread might get caught in a heddle and you'll, you'll notice that because the heddle starts pulling out like that but my pedals my heddles are just hanging loose there that's really great I'm gonna keep going I'm looking I'm seeing that generally everything has a similar tension there's not one item that's tighter than the other looking great okay so now on the other side all that slack is starting to disappear and there's starting to be almost a straight line between my loom, my floor loom, and my story loom. So the next step is that I'm gonna walk across the room and I'm gonna pull the story loom closer to the floor loom so that that bow comes back into the thread. And I'm not going to pull it all the way up. I'm gonna pull it a little bit, like maybe halfway across the room so that it still keeps the threads nice and spread out, nice and untangled. And then I'm gonna come back here and repeat this process until the story loom is basically almost on top of the floor loom. So you can see the warp is now coming out of the floor loom, it's going across the room, but instead of swinging all the way down to the floor, it's kind of sticking straight out from the loom at this point, because we pulled up all the slack when we were wheeling the warp onto the loom. Now I'm gonna show you how it's coming across the room up to the story loom. And there's the story loom. So what I'm going to do now in order to get that slack back into the warp so I can keep wheeling it onto the loom, I'm gonna pull the story loom closer to the floor loom. And I don't wanna scratch my hardwood floor, but I'm gonna do my best to, to try and carry it over. So this may look a bit awkward. <laughs> Here we go, I'm just lifting it up and carrying it halfway across the room. So you can see the floor loom and the story loom are really close to each other now and there's more than half the warp has already been cranked onto the shaft at the back of the loom. So that's exciting. As we get closer to the end here, as this part of the warp gets closer, what can sometimes happen is that as you're cranking it on, you'll notice some tangle is happening on this side of the beater. And all that, that just happens because these threads have been strung all the way across the room and some of them may have gotten wrapped around each other. So I just go up to the beater and kind of pull on them a little bit and straighten them out. If it got really tangled, well, it shouldn't get really tangled. You should keep an eye on it and keep, you know, only crank a few rounds each time and then keep checking the beater, keep checking the heddles, making sure everything is smoothly moving towards the back of the loom. If it did get really tangled, worst case scenario is you could untie it where you have it tied on your thing that's keeping it organized there and just pull out those eight, not pull them out, but just sort of use your fingers to pull out all the tangles in those eight threads or four threads, depending on how you've grouped them. And then, you know, it'll get all worked out, but don't let it build up. Don't let the tangles get more and more. Just keep an eye on stuff. Keep things moving smoothly towards the back of the loom. So you can see now that the story loom is as close to the floor loom as it can get. That's as, that's as close as we're gonna get. And the warp has come down, it's sw sw swinging down and through the beater and into the heddles and across. So we are almost done cranking the warp onto the loom. And I can't really crank anymore because it would start getting really tight. So the, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the threads from the story loom. And right now they're all tied up in there 
uh, in like groups of four, I'm going to, you know, pull them all off and I'm going to put them in groups of eight, similar to how I had in the back. And then I'm going to let them hang down over the front beam here, just through, um, so that they're hanging down below. So I'm going to show you what to do with the threads as you remove them from the story loom. So this is the first eight threads. These were tied up like this, hanging down. I just untied the, them from there. And at this point, I'm going to use my fingers to pull out all of the any tangles. And I'm going to try to make them have an uh, even length. And you know, part of the process that we just went through, the goal was to reduce the time spending at the beginning, measuring warp and making sure every single piece was exactly the same. So I just want to demonstrate to you that our eyeball method was pretty accurate. Uh, these are the eight pieces of thread and they're all within two or three inches of each other there. There's one slightly longer one there, but there's not going to be a lot of waste in this warp. Now across all of these warp threads, you know, there's an average and there will be some waste, but we're not talking about a, a huge amount of thread for the amount of time saved measuring the warp. So I'm just going to pull, make sure it's nice and uh, untangled. And then at the very end, I'm going to tie a knot, an overhand knot similar to what I did in, in the back on the, on the back beam. Just loosely, don't want, because you might, you might need to untie it later. And I'm just going to let that hang down over the front beam towards the floor. So I'm going to repeat that process for every eight threads all the way across here. Just, I'm going to untie it, pull with my fingers to get all the tangles out, get them all to the same length, tie a knot, overhand knot, and let it drop down until I've got eight times eight threads all set up along the front beam. And then I'm going to pull out the story loom and put it on the other side of the room to get it out of the way. I'm sitting on the floor here in front of the loom. And after I got all the warp threads tied off into lengths that are about the same. I let them fall and I cranked a little bit more of the warp onto the back of the loom there. And now it's time to attach the front of the warp to the front of the loom. And you'll see there's this canvas here. It's attached to this thing that rolls. And what's going to happen is once we get it tied on, we're going to uh, roll the loom so that it's nice and tight and we have a good tension as we're weaving. And the warp gets attached to this metal piece, uh, this piece of metal here. Uh, on the metal, there's this yarn. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'll put it um, up on my knee so you can see. I take the yarn and I've already made it so that the knots are about the same length. And I just um, put the yarn, I split where the knot is and I put the yarn through it. Pull, this is kind of a long piece of yarn, but whoop, pull it through. And then I go down um, under the metal bar again. So I'm basically like sewing the warp to that metal bar. Split where the knot is, this is a group of four. I did some groups of four. And bring the yarn down under the bar again. Grab the next one. Very important to keep them in, in the order. Split the knot, pull the yarn through, and bring it under the metal bar. So I've done that initial effort of weaving, of not weaving, but of sewing the, the warp to the metal bar. Um, I'm just gonna pull some of the yarn through, pick up the slack a little bit. I want it to be a little bit tighter. So. You can see I'm just feeding the yarn through, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it through the zigzag um, and then until, until I like it. Um, but basically I want it to be even tension across the warp and then it's basically sewn on to the metal bar at this point. I'm going to tie off my yarn. Okay. So the, the next step involves cranking this canvas tight. And this, in my loom, it's this little thing that lets me crank. Um, and then there's a bar here that keeps it from rolling backwards. Now each, each design of loom is gonna be a little bit different. My loom is not actually a brand name loom. It was made by somebody at some point. It was given to me by my weaving teacher. And 
I, to figure out how it worked, I studied how all the other brands of looms works, but there was not a manual for this one, but each loom has a similar functionality, similar concept behind it. So whatever you use to crank your, yours one might be a little different. So I'm just gonna tighten up that canvas. And to keep it from rolling back, in my case, I just push that little thing. Whew, that was a long day. That was a lot of work. But we have a beautiful warp on our loom ready for some plastic bag weaving. And as you can see, it's got a lovely tension and we've got lots of nice warp wound onto the back of our loom. So we can do, I, I usually do at least three or four projects on a single warp. So that's exciting. That'll keep me busy for the next week or so. Woohoo! And so I'm going to hopefully make other videos that show you the next steps, which involve choosing the materials and um, making the plastic bag weaving process itself and, and then finishing, finishing your plastic bag project. So I hope that this helped you, whether you plan to weave plastic bags or whether you plan to weave other materials. I know my method is a little different than the way a lot of weavers do it, putting a warp on the loom. So hopefully it's helpful for some. Some may scoff at the method, that's okay. Um, but I hope it was helpful to you and inspires you to do some weaving on your floor loom as well. Thanks very much for watching.